Are you a nursing student or nurse in Ontario, Canada? Then you've probably heard of a few acronyms like CNO, RNAO, RPNAO, ONA, and more. It's a lot to remember, and on top of all the other healthcare acronyms you need to be familiar with, right? Well, I've got you covered because this series of videos walks you through some of the most common non-clinical acronyms, especially if you're looking to practice as a nurse in Ontario, Canada. Stay locked in. My name is Professor Jess B, and this is LJ. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, this channel was created to support nursing and healthcare students just like you. As a nursing professor and educator, I offer tips and expert advice that will help you succeed in school and in your new career. If this is something that you're interested in, show me some love and support. Hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on weekly videos. I remember being a nurse and not knowing the difference between all the non-clinical acronyms. I mean, in nursing school, we frequently use acronyms as it relates to our clinical practice, but there are also acronyms that are used by nurses outside of the clinical arena. In Ontario, Canada, there are a few organizational bodies and programs that are important to be familiar with. Here's a list to start with. CNO, RNAO, RPNAO, ONA, NSO, and NGG. I know it's a lot to remember. Let's break each of them down a little bit more so by the end of this video, you know each of these acronyms, how they relate to your role, and how they might benefit you. First and foremost, I gotta start with the regulatory body for nurses in Ontario, the College of Nurses of Ontario, or otherwise known as CNO. In Canada, there is no national body that provides each nurse with their license. Instead, each province or territory is responsible for its health care. So if you intend to practice as a registered nurse or a registered practical nurse or nurse practitioner in Ontario, it is mandatory that you register with the CNO. By definition, the CNO is the regulatory body for nurses in Ontario. They do this by establishing requirements to enter into the nursing profession and they very clearly articulate and enforce standards of practice that must be followed by nurses. And they administer a quality assurance program to make sure nurses are competent and safe. Ultimately, the CNO's purpose is to protect the public, not nurses, to protect the public and ensure that the public receives safe and ethical care from competent and qualified nurses like you and me. Bottom line, if you plan to be a nurse in Ontario, you must obtain your license from the CNO, make sure you follow their standards of practice that they set out, and each year you'll renew your license with them too. So, so if the CNO's job is to protect the public, then who looks after the nurses? Well, that's where the RNAO and RPNAO come in. The Registered Nurses Association of Ontario, that's a whole mouthful, RNAO, and the Registered Practical Nurses Association of Ontario, RPNAO, are two voluntary professional organizations that represent the nurses. By definition, the RNAO is the professional association representing registered nurses, nurse practitioners, and nursing students in Ontario, Canada. RNAO aims to represent the voice of registered nurses and, and really advocates for change and changes that matter to nurses. They do a lot of work to advance the role and image of nurses, and they speak out on a lot of issues that impact nurses and healthcare. They're also very well known for their best practice guidelines, which include over 50 guidelines available in all different types of languages. The RPNAO, on the other hand, represents the voice of registered practical nurses, so RPNs. Now, as the, their professional association, they too focus on advocacy and ensuring that the perspectives and concerns of practical nurses are heard, that key issues are heard. Remember, 
The RNAO and RPNAO are voluntary, so you can decide whether to become a member each year or not. If you're a nurse that works in a hospital, long-term care facility, public health, or community clinic, or any type of other industry in Ontario, then you will probably be part of a union called the Ontario Nurses Association, or ONA. Don't be fooled by the name. I know it says association, but it's actually a union. The ONA represents over 68,000 nurses and healthcare professionals, as well as 18,000 nursing student affiliates. They really play an important role in influencing policy and making legislative changes to improve various working conditions for nurses and other healthcare workers. For example, they speak on issues like wages and access to PPE or personal protective equipment. So the main purpose of the ONA is to advocate and defend the rights of its members. So they got your back and they're there to represent you as the employee. So if there are issues in the workplace between you and the employer, this union, the ONA, handles all the grievances and arbitrations. And they even provide legal assistance if there are complaints or reports from the CNO about your professional practice. If you're a nursing student in Ontario, then you might have heard of the NSO, the Nursing Students of Ontario Interest Group. This interest group is made up of students just like you, and their mandate is to promote, support, and empower nursing students in Ontario and speak out for nursing students and their health. Now, this group acts as a resource for Ontario nursing students and really focuses on the needs and concerns of students. They host a lot of interesting webinars that students can attend. And based on what I saw on their website, they have different chapters across the whole province. So you'll be able to connect with other nursing students from different colleges, universities within your local region. Finally, if you're an Ontario nursing student close to graduating and looking for a full-time employment, then you're going to want to know about the Nursing Graduate Guarantee or the NGG program in Ontario. The NGG is a government-funded program that's designed to help RN and, and RPN students find full-time employment, and they help you really transition from a student to a new graduate nurse. Basically, the government provides employers like hospitals or long-term care homes with funding for 20 weeks to support your transition to practice. And eventually, after those 20 weeks are complete, it leads to permanent full-time employment. Woo! <laughs> now, to be eligible for the NGG, you have to be within 12 months of registering with the CNO. So don't think about applying for the NGG in your first year of nursing school. In fact, even I used this program when I landed my very first nursing job as a new graduate nurse in the emergency department. In my last year of nursing school, I did my final consolidation and I applied through the NGG program and landed my first time, my first full-time position as a nurse. Woo -hoo! This could also be a reality for you. So even if you're not close to graduating yet, just take a look at the NGG portal and familiarize yourself with the program so that by the time you're ready to look for a new nursing gig, you have a place to start or a job that's waiting for you with your name on it. Hey guys, thanks for joining me on the JLT channel today. I promise I've got more good content for you like this video over here. And don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, and even share this video with a friend because it's just like that. <laughs>